Today, we chatted with musician and festival planner Scott Lochner about some exciting news at the Driftless Music Gardens. We talked about festivals during COVID, the season lineup, new happenings, festivals coming back, and what people can expect from their music festivals in 2021. You can find more conversations on our website, lacrosselocal.com. I'm Amy. And I'm Brent. And this is Lacrosse Local. So this past summer, we interviewed Cricket Lochner of Driftless Music Gardens and how they are adapting their music festivals into a drive-in concert series. You can check that out on episode 39. But today we're here to talk with Scott Lochner about some exciting news. But first, Scott, how do you fit in? What's your history with the Driftless Music Gardens? The People Brothers Band has been throwing festivals since they started, and I wasn't in the People Brothers to start. My older brother, Tim, started the band, Cricket's husband, Tim. And then um, I had always played with bands. I live in Winona, Minnesota, just up the river from La Crosse. And I would played in bands my whole life since I was 21. And so I've been involved in every festival or played at every festival we've ever had. And I think it was around 2015, we were, uh, we had just got done throwing a festival we were doing at a place called the Bullpen in Hillsboro. And I think I was off in Colorado or something seeing my favorite band, which is Fish. (laughs) They're going to laugh that I threw that in because they they say it's all I talk about. (laughs) But uh, I get a call from Tim that said, just saying, hey, I think we have an opportunity to open our own venue. And obviously I was like, heck yeah, I'm in. That's kind of how that started. Since we've been doing that, I mean... I've played at every festival, I think, so far that we've had out there. As far as the festival's concerned, I'm typically in charge of all the vendors that we bring in. With the drive-ins this summer, I played a big part in like the design as far as how we're going to set everything up with the cars and whatnot. We have it set up, you know, so everything's good sight line for every car, you know. Besides that, you know, I I do a lot with the numbers, with writing offers for bands and stuff like that, trying to figure out what we can afford, what we can take a risk on and stuff like that. Usually during the festivals, too, I'm one of the nights I used to cook for a living. So I do all the green room hospitality food and stuff like that. So kind of have my hands everywhere in the business, just like Tim and Cricket do as well. I came out to one of your drive-in concert shows, saw Greg Hall and the Wrecking Ball. Thought it was a great venue, had a great time. Now you have an exciting lineup for 2021. Who are we going to see this next summer? Well, we just announced we had a very successful summer this summer, and it put us in a position to kind of take a gamble. And we decided we're going to go after some kind of national touring bands. So we're bringing in Leftover Salmon out of Colorado that's been around for 30 years now, toured all over the country. I've been listening to them since the late nineties. So I'm kind of, it's kind of really, I'm pumped for it. I'm a little nostalgic. And then the next night we're following it up with horseshoes and hand grenades who we've had at multiple festivals. And, you know, we had them at a drive-in last summer and they're just, you know, their family. And it's been awesome watching them grow as a band and gain popularity and see them take off the way they have. And then the Sunday night, we decided we were going to go even bigger, and we brought in the infamous String Dusters, just a phenomenal bluegrass band, won Grammy in 2017 for Best Album of the Year, 2018, I believe. I'm good friends with our my buddy Tom, who had thrown boats in bluegrass for years and years. And I remember, in, I think it was 2015, he had booked them and he, I just remember him telling me like, you got to check these guys out. They're the real deal. And a year later they took home a great, you know, like, yeah, Tom, you're right. Turns out, but he usually is. So, <laughs> but we're really excited to have, we're kind of stepping everything up. We're bringing in the big stage for these full production with the lights and it's going to be a challenge. We're really looking forward to it. So speaking of that, last time we chatted with you guys, you had temporarily suspended children being in attendance. You weren't doing camping. What has changed since last summer? What adjustments have you made? This year, we're, we're going to allow kids to come with their parents. I think what's changed as far as that is 
the overall understanding of what's going on in the world with the pandemic. And now even the little ones have had, you know, nine months now of knowing that things are different, that you can't just, you know, be running around playing with everybody all the time. I also feel like our crowd has did such a great job over the summer of respecting the rules that we feel like we have a responsible crowd that will manage their children and their children will understand the situation. So we're looking at it like we're all in it together and we really, it really sucked for us last year to not allow kids like a big group of our loyal diehards at DMG are families that have been coming for years and it really hurt to not have kids there this year. And I think if we do it right and we do it responsibly, I think we can definitely keep that trend up with having the kids there. Just by participating in last year with Greg Hall on the wrecking ball, I could totally see how kids could be more conducive to the, the driving aspect of it. Just basically for me, you know, I'm not going to be spending three days out at a festival, but it'd be great to have my car nearby so I could throw snacks at them, let them kind of dance around. Speaking of that, you had to cancel People Fest, Bonfire Music Festival in 2020 due to COVID, of course. But it looks like you have those dates scheduled for 2021. What can people expect from those festivals? We are doing the festivals next summer. A big kind of turning point on that front was with the people brothers band we didn't play many shows last summer we did a couple drive-ins here and there and some truck bed things in madison of that sort but then we did do a gig in october at harmony park which was a festival and the way they set it up and we we kind of took a note from them watched everything they did and you know we're gonna do it it's gonna be a 300 person limited ticket and we're probably going to have i think maybe six bands a day it's set up so everyone when you come in your car is going to be where you park you're going to have a big area and that will be your campsite so people will camp directly with their cars we're contemplating different ideas for the concert field um we really liked what harmony park did so we're probably going to do a hybrid version of that There will be kind of a dance floor area in the front by the stage that's a big, big area, but it's masks required in there at all times. And then we will have pods set up outside that that relate to where your car is, that you'll have a number that that's your pod. So you can leave your chairs up there, everything like that. We feel confident with the amount of space we have and limiting it to 300 people that it's going to be a really, really fun time and just a release for people to actually kind of get back to somewhat normal, but still taking full precaution and being careful. Yeah. That seems like a great idea to have that uh, all in one sort of camping spot, but then also people can go back up to the front and watch music. Can you share an experience? You know, you've had this past history with this location and this festivals for years. Can you share experience from the past that kind of defines the experience out of Driftless Music Gardens? That's such a tough question because we I have so many memories that stick out to me. Like when we first started, the very first festival, I remember we kind of had the the main stage down in this field facing up to the ridge. And then my brother's cabin is right up on top of the ridge. And I just remember sitting up on the porch watching from, you know, probably 500 yards away. And I think it was Charlie Parr and Charlie's voice just with natural echo and reverb going through those hills was just mind blowing to me. There's so many that stick out. Our lead singer, Teresa, got proposed to at People Fest. Her and her husband, John, actually got married out at Driftless as well. I'm a big fisherman and we have the Pine River that goes right across the street. So every once in a while, like even during these drive-ins, you know, during the middle of the show, I can actually sneak down to the bridge and throw a line in the water and I can sit there at the bridge and just hear the music coming down there. It's like I have a little stereo right with me. It's Mm -hmm. so clear out there and it travels so well. The relationships, I guess, that I've built with so many people, a lot of our crew and volunteers that have helped us out so much out there, we've all become like a big family. And I mean, keyboard player, Bobby, I mean, his kids, 
it's like I've been seeing them grow up out there. And like they love nothing more to come out to the farm for a weekend, whether we're throwing a show or not. Hmm. We spend so much time out there working on stuff that it's just a big family operation. It's just, I, I guess that's it's just everyone that I've met through there and our crew and team is what really stands out to me. So people want to find out more about the Drifters and Music Gardens, you know, the drive-in shows, pick up tickets. Where's the best place to send them? Best place to go would be driftlessmusicgardens.com. There's also, you know, if you're on Facebook, you can just search Driftless Music Gardens and it'll take you to our page there and also our Instagram page. It'll have a link on there. Everything we announce, we pretty much announce through the website, Facebook, and Instagram. Lacrosse Local Podcast is a production of River Travel Media. Do you have an interview idea you would like to share with us? Message us on Facebook at Lacrosse Locals. Subscribe to the Lacrosse Local Podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you like us, rate us five stars. We thank you for it.